we might put it this way, is a believer called to forgive something as hurtful as sexual unfaithfulness? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not talking now about hard-hearted, unrepentant, mm -hmm. ongoing mm -hmm. adultery. I'm talking about someone failed. Yeah. Are we called to forgive that? Mm -hmm. I think the Bible's answer is clear, yes. We're called mm -hmm. to forgive even something like that. Welcome to the Straight Truth Podcast. I'm Josh Philpott, your host. As always, I'm joined by Richard Caldwell, the pastor of Founders Baptist Church. Our guest today is Ken Ramey, the pastor of Lakeside Bible Church. Okay, brothers, on this theme of marriage that we've spoken of before, our next question has to do with divorce. Obviously a painful experience in the life of believers that have had to go through that. Um, but what does the Bible really say about this? And in particular, our question is, my spouse has been unfaithful. Can I divorce him or her if my spouse has been unfaithful? Pastor. Well, Jesus was asked about divorce, mm -hmm. Matthew 5, Matthew 19. And one of the things that our Lord made clear is um, the standard by which most people measure these things is a standard of hard-heartedness. And Christ's answer indicated that the desire of God for us to maintain marriages. Mm. And so forgiveness is a key to any marriage. Even when the sin that's been committed against us is the worst that we could imagine. So sexual unfaithfulness. Um, we might put it this way. Is a believer called to forgive something as hurtful as sexual unfaithfulness? Mm. Now, I'm not talking now about hard-hearted, unrepentant, mm -hmm. ongoing mm -hmm. adultery. I'm talking about someone failed. Yeah. Are we called to forgive that? Mm -hmm. I think the Bible's answer is clear, yes. We're called mm -hmm. to forgive even something like that. I think about Colossians 3, um, 12 and 13. It says, put on then as God's chosen ones, mm -hmm. holy. I mean, there's the standard, right? We're yeah, one of God's yeah. chosen people. Yeah. Uh, someone who's, who's been the recipient of everlasting mercy and grace and love. I mean, that's, my, that's just to inform my mindset. Holy and beloved, or beloved, compassion. I'm going to put on compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other. And here's the standard. As the Lord has forgiven you. And then he ends with these words, verse 13. So you also must forgive. Hmm. And so forgiveness for, for a Christian is not optional. Mm -hmm. It's mandatory. Yeah. And Peter asked the question, Lord, how often shall I forgive my brother? Seven times. And the mm -hmm. Lord's answer was 70 times seven. And, and so um, forgiveness is something that is to characterize the Christian because we are a people who've been forgiven. So I would say what we strive for uh, at all times is to maintain marriages and to encourage people to be compassionate and kind and forgiving toward each other, even when the sin that's been committed is, is perhaps the worst that we could imagine. Mm -hmm. Ken, what do, you, what do you say about this? Yeah, I agree, Richard. Um, I think the overarching principle in Scripture is that God hates divorce. Mm -hmm. His desire is one man, one woman for life. Um, he knew that there would be sin that happened often in that in that marriage relationship, but it was to be forgiven. And I, I think a, a key to a good marriage is you have two good forgivers. That's right. And, mm -hmm. um, and, and while Jesus said that there, that immora sexual immorality, adultery is a ground for divorce. Mm -hmm. uh, I do agree. It was in the context of a hard hearted, unrepentant, ongoing, um, somebody refusing to give up that sin, um, that God has mercy on that faithful partner. However, um, the, I think the higher road is the book of Hosea. And we see the example of God, really Hosea um, pursuing his harlot wife uh, who committed multiple adulteries 
And uh, we know that, that book's in the Bible to show us the, the forgiving love of God, just how He is a relentless redeemer and He pursues us even when we're sinning. And um, we're all spiritual adulterers and He's forgiven us. And so uh, I know my wife and I have made a commitment to one another that we don't even bring the word, mm. the D word we call it, right. yeah, divorce, yeah. Mm-hmm. up in our conversations. It's not an option. And we've talked about even if one of us, like God forbid, were to be unfaithful to the other, that we would want to take the, the the high road, and and model God's love and His forgiveness, which is unconditional and uh, sacrificial, and forgive one another, even as uh, Hosea forgave Gomer mm-hmm. uh, in the Old Testament. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sometimes we pull away from the individual passages and we have a larger view of the question. I think it helps us. Uh, to focus in on what God's desires are. Uh, You mentioned um, the book of Hosea, and you think about God's relationship to the nation of Israel. If we believe that God still has a plan for the nations uh, and a kingdom that's coming, then every promise that he made to Israel in the Old Testament, he's going to fulfill. He's going to fulfill it in a believing Israel, Mm -hmm. but nonetheless, it's going to be fulfilled. And if you ask, uh, has Israel proven faithful to God throughout the ages? The answer clearly is no. And yet God made unconditional promises that he's going to fulfill. And then we think about Christ's relationship to the church, which is the model for our marriages. And as you just mentioned from the book of James, uh, we have committed spiritual adultery. We have been unfaithful to our Lord. Uh, At times, sadly, to our own hearts, uh, we have played friends with the world. And yet, we're not divorced. God doesn't put us away. Um, He holds on to us forever. And then when we think about the standard of forgiveness that's taught in the New Testament, 70 times 7, uh, that's an exhausting standard. (laughs) That's 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 an all-encompassing standard. And then when we think about the standard of love, uh, we're not just called to love our friends. We're called to love our enemies. We're called to love people who would purposely, spitefully use us. And if we're called to love our enemies, certainly we're called to love the person that we have entered into a covenant relationship mm-hmm. with called marriage. And then we think about keeping vows. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've yet to do a mm-hmm. wedding ceremony when, where someone vowed until divorce parts us. I've never heard that in all my years of doing wedding mm-hmm. ceremonies. Mm-hmm. Everyone vows mm-hmm. uh, for better, mm-hmm. for worse, rich or poor, sickness, health, until death parts us. This is what you promised. Mm-hmm. This is what you promised. And then when you look at the Matthew 5 and 19 context, um, it's interesting. That's, that, those are the only places in the gospel accounts where you have the exception clause given, except in the case of Pornea. Uh, not found in Mark, not found in Luke. Uh, the issue is not addressed in John. But in, the other, in Mark and Luke, the same uh, scenario is addressed, and the exception clause is not there. Mm-hmm. My personal view is it's because the answers given in Matthew had to do with the Jewish audience and had to do with the betrothal period. Uh, there were two common views of divorce that were on, uh, that were well known by people in that day. One, you could divorce your wife for any cause. The other, only in the case of sexual immorality. And when the disciples heard the answers of Jesus, they were shocked. They said, if this is the case between the man and the woman, it's better not to get married. <laughs> I mean, that was their understanding of the standard Christ was passing on. So the Bible does acknowledge the reality of divorce. Uh, The Bible even acknowledges that a believer may have to choose a divorce. 1 Corinthians 7 makes that clear, I think, the 10th verse. Um, But we should always work for the the maintaining of marriages, and we should always remember the standard for a believer is is not hard-heartedness. The standard is love and forgiveness and compassion. Well, thanks for joining us for this episode of the Straight Truth Podcast. We hope you've enjoyed it. Now, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this podcast on our YouTube channel. Or if you would like the audio version of this podcast, you can get that on the podcast app of your choice. For more details about Straight Truth, you can go to straighttruth.net. And there you can find details about our Facebook page and our Twitter page. Remember that Straight Truth is a production of Walking in Grace Ministries, which is the preaching ministry of Pastor Richard Caldwell. For more info, go to walkingingrace.org.